Hey everybody, welcome to The Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson. This is our second week of our street photography critique group, and we have some great photographers with us to talk about street photography. Um, we have uh, Nina Welch-Kling, who recently published her book, Duo Log. She's based out of New York City and is doing some uh, very impressive work there. We're going to talk about her work in the coming weeks. Um, Aristide Economopoulos is also a New York City photographer. He is a former, for, well, a current photojournalist, um, and his project we looked at last week here on the Crit House. That is a work he's uh, in progress uh, working on on Coney Island. And we also have Iberian X Perillo, the host of The Candid Frame, which if you have not listened to, you should. It is the best photography podcast out there bar none. Over 600 episodes of interviews with the greatest photographers that exist on this planet. This week, we're going to take a look at the work of Harris Ianu, who is from Cyprus. He has a show that is up currently in New York City, in Soho. And we are discussing that body of work and trying to help him work through some decisions about if all or some of the images should go up on the wall. After we have this discussion, we'll figure out, we'll find out what he put up on the wall for that show in New York City this summer. Here's that discussion. I mean, I would like some uh, feedback on that part also, if you don't mind, because uh, I think the space is too little for what I have, which means if I decide to put everything, it's going to be like a collage. So you have you have a show that's going up in New York. So by the time this airs, the show will be up, which will be interesting to see. So you are looking maybe for some input on an edit? The size of the wall, I mean, as big as if I were to put all this up together, there would be what I feel is a bit too close to each other. Let's let's uh, use the hive mind of our esteemed group here to see what thoughts they have uh, well, broadly, and well, then on uh, on uh, potentially an edit. Uh, Nina, do you want to kick us off? In terms of editing, I mean, I've just gone through it once, but already in the beginning there were some shots. I mean, the first two is that as a um, are they printed on one page? Yeah, there were that, two photographs. That's, exactly. Yeah, that that's that's uh, the only photograph. The only print is going to be a diptych. I mean, is there a possibility to do another diptych, so that it feels that that's something you're interested in? I like putting uh, pictures together. Uh, sure, uh, but this is is now printed on one paper. Everything else is single uh, single print. Okay. This is my uh, my my exhibition title is uh, mostly uh, dogs and pigeons and people. I uh, think in, in terms of the dog one, if you wanted to eliminate one or two shots, I think there were some that were like this one and the next shot. It's the same ball. The same so, person, yeah. Right. So. I think you could choose one of the two so you don't repeat that I know, oh, you follow, you stood there for a while and it was interesting to you and, you know, you kept shooting. Is there one that you prefer? You're talking uh, in, in regards to exhibiting? Yeah, because I thought we're, we're looking in terms of if you wanted to take one of the photographs out. But this could be also kind of like a diptych because it's kind of time-lapse sequencing and what happens if you stay with the subject? Yeah, put put them together. Right, or just use one of them. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to just um, edit out one or two shots. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try and keep all the photographs. It's just uh, also grouping them together, which way? Oh, okay. I guess the question is, are you interested in grouping the dog shots all together in kind of a collage way? Or are you more interested in creating yeah, I mean, I, a I, different I, sceneries? I can put some of these surreal shots with the lines or with the uh, together, you know. So how 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 are you planning putting them up? On are you going to group them as by subject or? I still haven't figured it out. Okay, but okay, we 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 don't need to talk about this. Maybe you can just give me some feedback on. Uh, 
you know, this group of photographs, how they speak to you, you know, if they work together. Sure. And, uh... Iberian X, run with it, my friend. Yeah. Um, you know, the initial images that you have um, that show um, sort of like the, the perspective, how you create basically it's an absurd scene, like yeah. the, uh, number four and um, number seven, you know, um, they evoke, you know, a sense of, of humor. It's sort of unexpected um, sort of a scene, but um, when there are too many of those images, it seems like it's like hitting the same note. The images are effective, but I would be, uh, I wouldn't use them too heavily um, in, you, in, 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 in an edit. Um, yeah, uh, you you feel I am uh, repeating myself. Well, if you have too many of them, at some point it's okay. Okay, I get it. But one of the things that I do like is that, like with this, which ones? Which ones did you feel like they, they were repeating themselves? Well, I just used two examples. I, I like four uh, and seven are good examples of that. But I, I think that one of the things that I kind of initially when I saw those those images that I that I pointed out that sort of kind of set the tone, but I really didn't see see that consistently reflected in the in in, in the rest of the work. It seemed to be sort of a, a, a shift in terms of the kinds of pictures that you were making. Uh like 14, for example, uh is the one with a man with a dog in his arm and him drinking uh drinking a beer. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a great great composition but it's very different to what the images were before and then you have the images of like um of sort of the dog there and the birds in the air and, and for me that is not as impactful as some of the other images in there yes it has mm -hmm. the same subject matter in terms of the dogs and, and the birds but as a viewer i'm trying to understand well put together what is what am I supposed to sort of take away from it, other than the fact that it's some similar subject matter? So I think that um, for me, it's it's a question of of the edit. It's a question of you know what what's your intention for the body of work? What's the takeaway that you want the viewer um, to feel or think about or to consider when they're taking a look at the um, at the photographs? You have a lot of the images of the birds that kind of wrap up the entire, the entire sequence here, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's so dominated by the birds. And then I just go, "Oh, I, I'm not really sure how this is so sort of be sort is supposed to be sort of a, a culmination of everything that I've seen before." Because anytime I look at a portfolio or a book, I'm I'm expecting to be taken on a on a journey of some sort. Um, and so by the time I get to the images of the birds, I'm really kind of lost as to, okay, what am I about it? This is because I think some of the images are really, really strong, but it's, it's the sequencing, uh, that just leaves me a little uh, at a loss in terms of, uh, what to sort of make about your intention with with the yeah. body work? So it's it's sort of the classic, you know. You sometimes you have to leave some of your loves on the editing room floor, right? You yeah, can't, you can't keep everything. Aristide, you've been very patient and jump um, in, sir. No, the, the pictures are very beautiful, very lyrical, and um, uh, but I would get back with my other two um, colleagues said um, I think it is about the editing. And it's um, part of the pictures become a little redundant, like the two ball pictures. And um, then also, um, I mean, I, I love the, you could do the whole thing just on the dogs or just on the birds. And I feel like the pictures are completely different and the pictures are very beautiful, but they're also the same photograph. So if you look at uh, 22, Okay, and then if you go up to 16, you know, we're, we're thinking that we're looking at layering again, we're looking at playing with that. And uh, I feel like 
some of these pictures really compete against each other in that sense. Because I feel like, although they're individually beautiful photographs, you're saying the same thing. And I feel like you have definitely gotten very comfortable and photographed in a certain way and seen a different way. And I mean, it, it's the, the images are beautiful. Uh, I mean, just the layering and the diagonal, the geometrics is really nice. I'm seeing a lot of that in the images. So you really have to think about what you want to say and how you want to say it. And that's why, to me, uh, these pictures are about beautiful design, but I want something maybe a little bit more, too. Um, uh, I want, uh, I mean, actually, one of my favorite pictures is the guy in the pool with the dog while drinking. It's beautifully layered, uh, but, you know, you also get a sense of their humanity. I mean, the guy brings in his shaggy, wet dog because he's part of the family. And but the design is really nice and about a sense of humanity. So uh, those pictures and this is also coming from a photojournalist, somebody who wants to tell a story, who wants to focuses on the humanity of pictures. So uh, I to me, this image like really uh, I love too. Um, the other images, um, you know, it, it, your last photo is a beautiful play with the birds. And it's really nice to see both of them play off each other in that sense. But I feel like you have that one and 24 is a lot alike too. The images are visually striking. It's really the edit is going to be really important and how it flows together. So before, uh, when we were in between episodes, uh, Harris, um, Iberian X was talking about an exercise that he does with his students that seems like it would be an interesting one here, Iber Iberian X. Is that, can you talk about that, what you had mentioned? Yeah, uh, I, I do what I call an edit, a, a core eight edit, where I have students select images and they basically make a, a edit of just eight images. And the idea is to think about it um, like a magazine layout where you're using like a full page image and the first image is the leading image the the one that sort of sets the tone for everything and the idea is i have people write down just three words that sort of encapsulate what they think the body of work is about and they usually are very descriptive it's not about the subject matter it's about okay what is this thing about at its at, at its core and then they look at the and they usually have you know 24 to 30 images on the table because i usually have them work with four by six prints but you can still make it work if you're just using lightroom and the idea is to pick that one image that is representative of those of those three ideas and then you choose the closing image again thinking with thinking in terms of that same idea so you have the opening and the closing and then you start picking pairs so you pick you know the second image and what i have them do is just grab images and just juxtapose them next to that second images so that first pair is images two and three and you're just seeing there whether you have images that sort of resonate with each other and so eventually you have oh a single opening opening uh, image closer and three pairs and then you take a look at that edit and you kind of see how well does it work reflective of the idea and the concept that you've come up with. And then if you find that it, you'll, you may find that, oh, you know, the first three work, but it ends up kind of weak at the beginning or the end doesn't work. And then you make small adjustments until you finally have an edit of eight that you know works. And once you have that, then you can build. So you could add, let's say another pair or another four images and go, okay, where can I fit this in? And, and rework it until you have it uh, uh, say an uh, edit of 12 that works just as effectively as eight and then you keep building up until you have whatever number of photographs that you feel uh, are necessary for the body of work but because my idea is if you can't make eight work you're not going to make 32 work just because you're adding more more pictures so so harris obviously you've got uh a show going up very soon and you uh you're not going to use just eight images but that but but the but the concept of the of of an edit of a body of work to make in order to make it stronger, I think is uh, pertains uh, in in this case. What's what's your response to the conversation we've had so far, sir? No, I understand uh, uh, 
uh, how everyone is talking about them. Uh, for me, what's uh, cohesive about my work is this uh, sense of uh, like uh, surrealism. The photograph is like a post. Uh, what makes it uh, interesting for me? The different themes are going on. It's like like people said, I can do three uh, three groups maybe of uh, photographs out of this twenty five or more. A smaller group of uh, works together. And uh, I agree with that completely. That's why uh, I had uh, this second thought about because it's all going to be on the same wall. That's what the feeling I had uh, also, because I would like to group different photographs together in a say, book, one after the other one. Also, I am doing different themes. I have, you know, I, I should uh, look at close-ups, uh, people faces uh, in Tokyo, I mean, maybe, um, 5,000 photographs. Uh, I also can do different uh, themes. I like I just like to play with uh, the geometrics, the visuals, you know. For me, when I what I feel about my photographs is uh, they are very traditional, I think. Like traditional yes. Uh, yes. street photography. So, um, <laughs> so I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. But Nina, it's, it, it's a, it, it looked like you had uh, you had a thought as we wrap yeah, up. Yeah, I... To the idea of surrealism, I think you're more successful when the, when the photographs, like the the cover shot that you mentioned, where I yeah. can't quite figure out, you know, is it a reflection or what am I looking for? I feel like it's you don't need to turn a photo upside down for me to to think that's um, a surrealistic photo. Or you know, I think your reflection shots are upside down. I think they work just as well if because I know you turned them upside down. I don't mm -hmm. have to spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. So I would rather see like the, the cover shot where, you know, I, I, I'm challenged to to figure out what, what I'm looking at or the glasses where the, the body is distorted. I think there are other ways than, than turning the photo upside down to, to create a surrealistic um, photograph. Okay. And you're very strong in, in filling the negative spaces between the dogs. And so the one with the beer, holding the beer um, bottle where you're yep. brilliant in, in, in figuring out how to fill all the negative spaces in between. And I think that's very, very successful. So we Thank will uh, uh, provide some information, Harris, on your show in the show notes so people can go and see what you've uh, put on the wall. And Thank you for showing it. So we have an interesting opportunity with uh, Harris's work now up in New York City in Soho, and we'll have information on where that is in the, uh, in the information below. But uh, uh, I thought it might be worthwhile just to take a look at what he decided to put up on the wall after this discussion. Uh, in an email from Harris, he tells me that the discussion was insightful. Uh, he enjoyed listening to everyone talking about, uh, uh, about the work. He exhibited all of the photos that we looked at here. He did not edit any out, even though there was a lot, uh, not a lot of space on the wall for the photographs to breathe. He grouped them as he saw fitting, and uh, this is the show as it appears on the wall in New York City. So interesting to have had this discussion, have the photo uh, show go up, and this is the final product. Thank you all for watching The Crit House. Next week, we look at the work of Nina Welch-Kling. <laughs>